Let's do both. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowen University. Today, I'm going to be hearing Descendants for the very first time. They have been highly requested as well the last couple of months, but I had a bit of a problem today, and I wanted to kind of find a solution. I'm the one was the poll winner, but a lot of comments said, you just have to check out Myage. And I thought this could be fun because both of the top two songs were played by different players who have different techniques. My Edge was from the album Milo Goes to College, their debut album released in 1982 with bass player Tony Lombardo, who you guys have told me constantly uses downstrokes and was primarily a pick player. And then we're going to go check out Everything Sucks, featuring the track I'm the One, which was from their fifth album released in 1996 with bass player Carl Alvarez, who was a finger player. I'm really interested to kind of compare and contrast them. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know which one I like the best and give you my thoughts. But I'm reading that Carl actually has a writing credit, the primary songwriter for the song, I'm the One. So let's do them back to back. This will be a nice kind of reference point between both songs. Let's get to it. Myage and then I'm the One by Descendants. <laughs> some driving bass. And if he's using downstrokes, I'm going to take you guys word for it. I can kind of hear because those notes were just so consistent. You didn't hear that kind of dee doo dee doo kind of alternate picking attack on the notes. It was just very just dun 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 right up front. I want to hear that bass intro again because it sounds like the song is going to be pretty full bore and I'm not sure if it's going to go back to it. And I missed the bass intro on some previous songs like the Wilhelm scream reaction. I thought that tapping part was going to come back, but it didn't. So I'm going to go back and hear it one more time and we'll let it play out. Yeah, those downstrokes add an intensity to that. You know, you don't hear this. It's kind of this. Whatever the notes are. We're kind of in D right now, going up to uh, the, the uh, major third down to C. And then after this first kind of verse, it changed. So let's give it a whirl. It did come back. Hell yeah. That was kind of a, an abrupt break to just nod back to the intro for a brief second. Now, what I really liked is that instead of the drummer doing a fill at this fast tempo here, kind of at the end of the phrase, the drums kind of kept the beat and let the bassist do the fill, which is kind of something you don't hear a lot. Normally, they're both kind of done in tandem. Listen to that here. <laughs> Right here. You just kind of had this. The bass took the fill there. And another thing I'm noticing on those first few phrases, I like that the bass, the drums, and the vocal melody were kind of like in unison. Da 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 da. Everybody lined up with that hit, and it gives that vocal phrase, the end of it, a lot of like finality and impact. And I like the cadence of those vocals. It kind of has like a nursery rhyme sort of. Cadence. Now, what I mean by that, and I've said this in other videos about other singers and bands, but it has just a very loopable, very like wholesome cadence. If that makes sense, it's like the melody was just like perfectly woven in. I want to hear that part right here because it just made it catchy. Exactly. Kind of had the da 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 da. That's just like that nursery rhyme cadence that every band kind of strives to have because it elevates the catchiness. Despite what he's saying, despite the notes, it's just that phrasing that really stuck out to me. Two minute song, I'm gonna let it roll. I promise. Yeah. 
Love that. Ooh, now it's kind of the feature. Love that. That's such a good phrasing. Da, da, da. I love that. I didn't think they were going to come back to it this many times. Let's see. Guitar is kind of mirroring that up here. That up a half step right at right there at the end just to take it up one notch. This was already really in your face, just right here. And you know, the last phrase to take it up to a key change like that, just if they couldn't go anywhere else musically to add intensity, going up a half step is the way to do it. I love that. Let's hear that. Make sure it was a half step. I think it was. Yeah. Because now we went, let's see. Yeah. Wow. I love this. Heck yeah. That was fun. I mean, just meat and potatoes, catchiness. And the bass was a lot more involved than I thought. You know, sometimes I read into your comments a lot, and I saw some things where it was like, oh, my edge is just the same bass line over and over again. It was, but it was the lead focal point of the song melodically. Now, the guitar had some things in there as well. And honestly, the vocal melody remained largely unchanged. And that repetitiveness is kind of why I think this song is going to be stuck in my head today. Again, that phrasing and the way the bass matched it further drives this point home. Just a a good cadence. What else can I say? This has the punk vocal timbre. When I think of punk, the energy, and it still has that upbeat thing going on with some tasty bass work that glued the song together, glued the parts of the songs together, was responsible for weaving in and out of the song sections, and then really drove it home when the key change, ha key change happened at the end. So this was bass player Tony Lombardo. The intensity of the picks, the downstrokes, I hear it added a nice flavor to the song. So we're going to move on to I'm the One. Carl Alvarez, finger player, fifth album, a little bit later. Let's get to it. Ooh. Okay, that had some curveballs musically right out of the gate. And it's a softer, more kind of cushiony tone. Just has that softer finger sound. And what's interesting is the tones are very similar, I think, at least the way they sit in the mix. But you can just hear a softer, warmer support already from Carl in this song, whereas the last song had that just more intense, just grindy intensity that really just pushed the song along. I want to go back because right out of the gate, I heard some really nice upper chord extensions. It sounded like he went to the third, which bass players don't do a lot just before a chord progression is even established. It was pretty ambitious already. And these songs are short, so I can go back to the beginning. Let's do it. E. Down a half. 
half set to E flat. That note. Instead of keeping on the root note E, we went down a half step to E flat. He just jumped right up and went. I don't know if he played that bottom E to fill it out, but that's a cool way to establish like the bass is going to be pretty cool in this song. I'm going to go ahead and just start right out of the gate with something melodic, what you wouldn't expect. Okay. <laughs> I went up the scale there. I mean, that's that's pretty ballsy. Okay, and then it goes in straight to A, went from A to C. So that E flat was a tritone. So already it's kind of framing out a bit of dissonance in the progression. Let's keep it going. There's little octaves there. Okay, we went, not to rewind and talk about that part, but it introduced E, E flat, A, C. We had an F, went up to A flat. So a lot of out of key dancing around already, and it kind of confuses your ear on where the tonal center is, which adds to kind of the unsettling feeling of some of these punk songs. I like when the various artists I've heard have done this, and they, they kind of just send you on a tailspin tonally, at least for somebody like me hearing this. So kind of fun. Nice little fill. There it was again. Ooh, those chords are interesting. That bass line is catchy right there. It just changes up the kind of that driving. It gives it a little bit more of a side to side, like a two-step kind of feel. He just injects that feel in there for a second. Let me hear that again, because that was that was a little tasty lick there. Love that. They keep breaking that back. I like it. Lost it. I heard that fill once. I like it keeps going back to that. Ooh, I caught it. Up close. Okay, that part is interesting too because it sounds like the guitar player took the guitar chord, uh, let's play a G, and he inversed it to give it that kind of fourth power chord sound. So instead of going one, five octave, he's going one, four octave, which actually implies a lower chord. So you, on a six string, you can make a six string guitar sound heavier if you kind of do that voicing of a sort of power chord. Sounds a little heavier than... So he's doing that on the tail end there, which kind of gives it that jump, 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 which is pretty intense. Right here. That's where I hear it. That's so weird. Okay. 
I really like when I do a song by an artist on this channel that I don't know the artist, but I've at least heard one song. Maybe it's a reaction I did previously, and then I did the artist again. But that second one, I feel, gives me the biggest context because I don't know enough about them yet to be primed on anything about the band, but I've at least heard a song where I can have a reference point to how the next song hits me. Things that are going on. How has the band changed in 10 years from album to album? But I was able to do that in one video here. Myage from 1982 all the way up to this album, the fifth album. I can't remember the year off the top of my head. So here's my thoughts. I'm going to go with Carl Alvarez is playing that song only because it had an element of unpredictability in the bass part. Like I feel like at any given time, the bass would just shoot off like a rocket and go way up here. And it didn't sound natural. It, it just sounded like a lead kind of over the vocal. And that clashing gave it a bit of, I don't know, like unpredictable chaos. It was just like a chaotic kind of sound because you weren't expecting the traditional root hugging bass player role to happen and he latched onto that really well, but I love the just the, the ambitious nature to go up and grab these different things and land on the non-roots and the thirds. Now, I'm going to tell you what I liked about Myage a little more. I think that song was catchier vocally. The simplicity of that cadence and the way the bass kind of mirrored the vocal melody drove that cadence home. Now, after doing this video, I think the song that's going to be stuck in my head today is Myage. But I like the spongier, warmer bass tone of Carl's playing. But the pick playing, I feel, added more of a, a straight line wind kind of intensity. It was just like, boom. This had a bit of color and dimension to it, talking about I'm the one. Those bass lines were kind of unpredictable. Myage had more of that boom, what I expect from a punk song. And I think the package and presentation was a little more predictable, and the song was able to kind of resonate with me more. But I like the colors and the weird off-kilter chord things happening on the one. So these are two different glimpses of the band, five albums apart, two different bass players who played completely differently and added unique things to the songs. But my vote is with Carl Alvarez, and I would love to hear more of his playing. No disrespect to Tony, but that's just more up my alley. Both songs were great. My edge was catchier, but I'm the one had just some really cool bass playing. So this was fun. Let me know what you think of the format. I would love to know what you guys think of both players, who you prefer, and let me know what else I should do from these players if they've played in other bands, but we're going to keep moving and getting to the artists that you guys have recommended. So thanks so much for hanging out. Like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And go follow me on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. I love you all as always. Cheers. We'll see you next time.